Hi beautiful souls, it's Han here again today with another video for you on this astrology, human design and gene keys channel. And today we're going to be talking about gene key number 8, human design gate 8, corresponding to the zodiac degrees of Taurus from 24, 30 degrees of Taurus to 0 degrees of Gemini. Now, it this archetype moves over into the first 0 0.07 degrees of Gemini. So I'm feeling more Taurus energy with regards to this archetype. Unless you're born like with some planets at zero degrees of Gemini, then this could also apply to you. But yes, so I've made an introduction video to this series and I highly recommend that you check that video out first just to get just to kind of get an idea about what I'm talking about in this um, bird vision key series. So I'll post a link to that video up above in the description box below. So you can watch that first and then come back and watch this video. So this particular archetype at the shadow vibration, it's called mediocrity. At the gift level, it's called style. And at the destiny level or in the gene keys, it's called the city. This is exquisiteness. And yes, the dream arc vision key bird totem corresponding to this archetype is the hummingbird, the cute little hummingbirds. And at the uh, shadow vibration, it's the slug. At the life key animal, this is the mole. In the I Ching, this archetype is water over earth, holding together. Every unique fish swims in the same water from the surface to the ocean floor. In the 64 genetic codons, this codon is called Phenylalanine. It's part of the ring of water. It's all about this inevitable journey to self-realization. And the programming partner of this archetype is going to be sign of Scorpio from 24.30 degrees of Scorpio to 0 0.07 degrees of Sagittarius or Gene Key and Human Design Gate 14. In Human Design, this particular gate is located in the throat center. It is part of the channel of inspiration or originality 1-8. And I have this archetype in my natal chart and also in my Gene Keys and Human Design, it pops up twice. It's part of my conscious um, Venus and unconscious Jupiter. So as I go throughout this video, I may incorporate some of my own experiences or stories regarding this archetype so that maybe it helps you guys to understand um, it better. Okay, so first we're gonna talk about the hummingbird. So the hummingbird, is a really unique bird. As we all know, it's the smallest bird out there. It's the bird that can beat its wings at the fastest rate and it drinks nectar, which is kind of, you know, different from how the other birds feed themselves, right? And of course, it's got exquisite, beautiful colors. The hummingbird f can fly backwards, upside down, and can hover in the same position when it's drinking nectar for a really long period of time and therefore that it makes its ability to fly different from the other birds that can't really do this. And the reason why the hummingbird is able to do this is because of its anatomy. If you look at the wings of a hummingbird, it really differs from most of the other birds. We can see that most other birds, a large part of the, the bones that you know forms their wings they look like arms, and there's a small tip at the end that, that is considered to be the hand of that bird, and that's kind of the connection between like, you know, their arm and their hand. But for the hummingbird, we can see that the hand is elongated. There's a shorter arm length, but a longer hand um, bone structure. And that's why the hummingbird is able to flap its wings differently. You know, it goes, it flaps its wing like kind of like back and forth rather than up and down like most of the other birds. And that's also why it can flap its wings much faster because, you know, your hands can move way faster than, you know, your whole entire arm can move. Because the hummingbird is 
so small and it only drinks nectar and it has a it's a bird that has a really high metabolism its heart beats two um, approximately 225 times per minute a human heartbeat is of course anywhere from 60 to 100 times per minute um, when it's at rest however it can beat, beat up to 1200 times per minute and its wings can beat about 70 times per second and while it's diving, it can go up to 200 wing beats per second, guys. That is a super fast bird. Because the hummingbird has a high metabolism, there's a bit of a disadvantage to this. Because it means that the bird is gonna have to need frequent feeding during the day. And that is why the hummingbird is constantly drinking nectar throughout the day. It rarely has any rest. It keeps drinking and drinking. It's in its nature to do this, but of course but it is a bird that works a little bit like a bee in a sense that it helps with pollination so the ecosystem of a hummingbird is really important to our entire ecological system because this is how you know flowers rely on reproduction right so this also means that when a hummingbird is sleeping it's not able to drink the nectar and I find this to be super interesting because it actually has to shut down a large part of its body and go into what is called a torpor state, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, which means that it slows down its heartbeat almost to like only 50 beats per minute. And that is even slower than a human being's heart beat um, per minute, right? Otherwise, if they don't do that, they're gonna, their metabolism will still be too active and they could potentially die during the night if they don't do that but when its body is shutting down like this it is almost reaching that hibernation point every single night it's not hibernating but it's very close and therefore the hummingbird is very much at risk in the night with its predators every night there's that risk that is infused in the hummingbird's life okay so if you have this archetype you see there's some, some of your traits may be that you know you could be somebody who's very good with your hands you know maybe you may notice that you were born as somebody who can um do little small things with their hands or crafts maybe something that interests you this is what i've noticed with people who have this archetype um because of you know that anatomy of the hummingbird and you got that gene within you you may be a bit artistic you may have some creative talents maybe you're interested in fashion or you um have a a trend or a style that you like to play with and that's kind of maybe different from other people and as I was studying this gene key I was thinking of um, Emily from Emily in Paris I feel like she has this archetype somewhere in her chart um, this this series is not one of my favorite series but I see some of her some of this gene key aid within her and uh, don't judge me on this, guys, but, um, you know, Claudia Kishi from The Babysitter's Club, I feel like she also has this archetype. Um, so, yeah. There's something about you and your energy and your aura that may be different from the people around you um, because the hummingbird is different from all the other birds, right, out there. And this can be with regards to your energy, your aura, your lifestyle, the way that you dress, your job, your career, um, the relationships and the people that you associate with. Maybe you also have a little bit of that restless, high strung energy like the hummingbird has. You may also be somebody who is looking for a cause to promote, um, to looking to make the world a better place. There's gonna be this calling within you to do that as the hummingbird's ecosystem is a really big contributor to the, to the our entire ecological system with its ability to pollinate, right? So there, there may be, you know, uh, a quality within you to be like a great promoter, good at marketing, or good with social media, you know, being a bit of an influencer there. Mainstream education may be something that you struggle with, and I'm going to talk about the shadow vibration of this real soon, but let me know if this is true for you. You kind of like went to school, but you found that you didn't quite resonate or uh, felt like your ability to learn was say, was in alignment with the way that the mainstream education teaches students in school so therefore you may have um, tried really hard to get good grades 
and studied really hard and maybe you did get good grades, but it, you never used the degree or you never used those skills in your um, kind of like your career, shall we say, or maybe you just were somebody who couldn't be bothered with the grades at all. Yes, so we can see that there. And the reason for this is, okay, now we're gonna get into the shadow vibration of this archetype. So if you have this archetype and you're at the shadow vibration, you may have a fear of standing out, a fear of success, a fear of being different. That's ultimately what it comes down to, a fear of being different. And because to be different, you know, within our collective unconscious, it is really unsafe. If we think about, let's say, people, communities, societies that are considered different, we can see, for example, during the Second World War and um, people of different races being tortured for being, of being somebody of a different race, like you know the Jews, minority groups, like African Americans that have become slaves because they were different. Racism, um, when, some, when there's a minority group of people who are different from the mainstream group, they're being prejudiced against these minority groups. Witches back in the past that were being burned because they were different. So these, I feel like, shall we say our ancestors, this fear in our past, you know, it could have been imprinted in the DNA of this particular gene key and human design gate and astrology and, you know, within you. So because ultimately at the bottom of it, people who are different are viewed as being a threat to the system. But also with mainstream education, people who think differently, people think outside of the box. Some, you know, with regards to mainstream education can be viewed as a threat to that education. You know, teachers who are, shall we say, not great teachers are going to view students who think differently or who bring up some creative, you know, solutions to something, um, who think outside the box as a threat to what, to their ego, to their knowledge. And they're going to try to shut that student down. And so, yes. And of course, if you have this archetype, you're not going to really resonate with mainstream education because mainstream education, the one that we currently have in the world right now, and there are, been, there are changes that's happening there in the industry, but the majority of it is still based off of the mass-produced education that was generated during the Industrial Revolution back in the, those days when there was a high demand for employment in particular fields of work, science or technology, uh, or you know, sort of this business. And so therefore there's an emphasis on those subjects as being more important. But that's because nowadays, you know, you have this archetype, you may see it, you're an individual and you may see that there's no need to try to fit yourself into the mainstream education anymore because the world of work has changed. Therefore, the fear of success, fear of being different at the shadow vibration can keep you at a level of suppressing the ability to look inwards and figure out who you are. And you may feel like, I know who I am, but I tell you, if you have this archetype, the work of figuring out who you are takes a really long time and it's a process of self-empowerment. It can even be painful and it takes a lot of hard work. So if you have this archetype and you think that you know who you are, really ask yourself, do you? Because you could possibly be putting yourself in a trap of safety. You feel safe about who you think that you know that you are. So you don't have to really figure out who you are so you don't have to be different so that you don't have to be considered as a threat. And when you feel safe about who you think that you are, there can be this feeling like other people are gonna feel safe as well. So other people are not gonna feel threatened. So I'm gonna keep things at this, you know, this level. When you do this, it leads to a mediocre life because you can be looking outside of yourself for like a role model um, to look up to, to kind of follow, and you can end up being somebody who copies or mimics other people with regards to their lifestyle, their work, their thoughts, their ideas, that you're not living your own life. You can be living in the background of life 
rather than being the star of your life. And so I'm gonna give you my little story in this. Um, in my early 20s, I used to work as a magazine columnist for a short period of time. And you know, I really enjoyed doing that because I was going out and interviewing successful people in Bangkok about you know, their lives, how they gain success, and I'd write stories about it, and people love to read it. But there was this feeling inside of me as I was doing this, as I was interviewing these people, that I want to be the one to be interviewed. <laughs> But of course I was suppressing that because I didn't know what that mean. I was thinking to myself, I don't know what I have to say. I mean, what would people ask of me? What do I even have to contribute? So eh, let's just do it. Let's, you know, these people have already gained success. So let's keep doing that. But as I, as these thoughts came towards me, it made me feel even stronger with regards to like, well, if I'm feeling so deeply that I do want to be interviewed for something, I want to be the star of my own life, not just be somebody who's interviewing other stars, then there must be something inside of me that can contribute to the world, and what is that? And so, you know, if you have this archetype, this may be something that you're kind of feeling there. Yes, if you're like, you know, too focused on your responsibilities and things outside of yourself, you can begin to feel empty. And the shadow vibration of this is that when you're feeling empty inside, right, you can still, you know, you may still be very good at your job, you may still have say things or do things that really impact and influence other people, but you can't persevere in that field. You may run away from that field because, you know, people can give you um, admirations for it, but inside of you, you're not feeling it. You're, you know, you feel like thanks for your admiration, but I'm not myself when I said that. And there can be this feeling of like you're deceiving other people. Some kind of like maybe even dishonesty can come up. Um, you can even feel like you you can't breathe in your own life. If you're feeling tired, like you can't breathe in your own life, it's because of the shadow vibration of this energy. And yes, when I was um, you know, the magazine columnist. I used to be a journalist before that, and then I became an English teacher. I had many different jobs. And um, in all those jobs, like my superiors would think that I was very talented, that I should continue to be a journalist even if I left their company. And they wanted to promote me as senior teacher when I was an English teacher when I was very young. But the more people were giving me the spotlight, and you may feel this as well if you have this archetype, that the more people are giving you the spotlight, this is key to whether you're really doing what you love and what it is that is coming from inside of you. Because when you're put in that position of spotlight and you feel like you don't want it, you know that you haven't been doing something that is truly authentic to your self and your creativity and that's kind of what I felt when I was put in these positions of spotlight the more I wanted to hide the more I wanted to shut away and kind of like run away that's the key to knowing that you're in the shadow vibration of this archetype another way of looking at the shadow vibration of this archetype is you could be somebody who is kind of living a fake life who kind of has on a facade and has a bit of like an artificial life that you're living you may seem successful, and of course this was also my shadow, that I seemed like I was successful, but yet I wanted to run away. And this may show up in your relationships, is that when you're getting very close and intimate with another person, like in a romantic relationship, now you can't hide, you can't be under that facade anymore. When the intimacy is really, you know, coming to you, and you really have to be vulnerable and present your real self. But if you're in the, vibe, the shadow vibration, you may feel like running away from that relationship. That's something that can happen here. So how do we get to the gift level of this archetype? To get to the gift level, it's almost as if you may have to go through a process of unlearning the things that you have ever thought about yourself and your life and your expression and reinventing that. 
relearning who you are and in that process being creative and even reinventing it re unlearning the conditionings of the education the family the society this is a big jump in your evolution if you've gotten to this phase knowing who you truly are reinventing yourself it's not an easy process because if you think about number eight in numerology, your gene key eight, human design gate eight, right? Number eight is um, a very challenging number. There's a lot of empowerment there. There's a lot of struggles there. It's linked to, I think it's Saturn or Mars, I'm not sure, but in numerology. So Richard Rudd calls this archetype the diamond of the self. And I feel the reason why he calls it this is because of this particular process is that there's a diamond deep within you that's waiting to shine. And, you know, first it's like a diamond in the rough. You know, you haven't um, let it shine fully. And when you want to make a diamond fully shine, there's a lot of processes that goes in with regards to like, I'm not sure what it's actually called, but you have to like, uh, so you have to actually take a knife and kind of like um, scrape, yeah, maybe it's a scraping, scraping out the outer layers of the diamond. And if you think about that, diamonds are very tough. You are very tough if you have this, you can do it. But you have to take that knife and you have to carve, metaphorically, of course, carve out the outer layers of you, almost like the, the, the energies, the conditionings that you know, you've put on layers and layers of that and yes that can be a painful process because it's like you're taking that knife and you're you're stripping those layers away and as you begin to strip off each layer you may um you may feel like a certain amount of like guilt or shame that you know can come up because there may be regrets you know oh how much do I love myself? Why did I put on that facade? Why did I uh, not speak up? Why did I not be myself in those situations? But that's okay, you're gonna get through it. You're a diamond, you're tough. When you begin to go through this process and it can happen as you're still, you know, um, scraping off your, these different layers of you, you're becoming more of somebody who is a free thinker. The gift vibration, the gift, yes, at the gift vibe level of this archetype, you're a free thinker. You're a free style liver, <laughs> um, free living, yes. And this, there's a rebellious spirit attached to this archetype because, you know, to be really free, it may be dangerous territory because you're not going to know what that the outcome of really being free is going to be. The only thing that you're going to have with you is your faith in yourself and faith that you're going to get through. This, you know, um, gate in human design, it's part of the channel of inspiration 1-8, right? This, is, this channel is part of the um, individual circuitry. Individual circuitries are about empowerment. And so this is what this is all about. It's being yourself, empowering yourself to be yourself. Style, yes. Style is creation itself. Um, and if we think about the essence of creation, it's like the Big Bang. It's how I like to think of this, like when the universe was first created, created. It's such a creative process. It's a Big Bang. It's dangerous but something great came out of it. This burst, right? It's not gonna sit happily with society because it's dangerous and, but there's a lot of pure joy and freedom of expression that you're gonna feel and that is way more important than fitting in. And this creativity will require surrender because creativity there's no pattern, you can't really plan it, it's spontaneous, it requires surrender. If you can surrender to let the creative process happen and let that um, control you, rather than you trying to control this creative process that's happening to you, you will find so much freedom. And your creative efforts, whatever that may be, they're gonna be way ahead of their time. 
just like the Big Bang, just like all creation, like when you're giving birth, you know, creating a baby, creating the universe. Creation is a natural organic process. It has its flows and it's unpredictable, but it feels so good, you know? And it can definitely be eccentric. And therefore, if you have this archetype, you know, you may find yourself feeling comfortable only when you're expressing your eccentric creations in fields that are considered like more acceptable, like fashion or design or music or film or um, movies, right? Yes, film and movies, where it's kind of more appreciated. But, you know, I would like to think that we in the world, we can have more eccentric businesses. We can have more eccentric medicine, eccentric forms of healing, creative forms of healing or business. We can have more eccentric you know, school teachers and um, we can put this you know, creativity, this, this eccentricity in fields where people didn't even expect. I mean, imagine you know, what that could do, right? So if you have this archetype, you're gonna be a natural influencer like social media, you know, you can be seen as an example of somebody who is ahead of their time, who is setting up new trends. And so this gate in human design is also called contribution. Contribution comes when you're at the gift level and you're not concerned about fitting in, but you're more concerned about creating more free thinkers. That is the contribution that you're here to give. That is your mission, shall we say. And this type of um, contribution, it's really contagious because people can see in your, they can see the goodness and the, the sincerity of your, shall we say, more selfless contribution to the world. But you know, the journey was long but because you've been through this journey in your heart, you know that we have to have more free thinkers. That may be your contribution here, is to be an example for other people there. So you can make all your dreams happen because when you're coming from a place of good intention, of sincerity in your mission, the universe is gonna reward you with that making that dream happen, right? And you're very much gonna be concerned about helping other people, creating more free thinkers so that we have a more freeing society. And the universe is gonna reward you with success, with an ability to accomplish what it is that you set out to accomplish, right? Like think about the hummingbird that is willing to um, be born. Well, it's not really, it's in its nature, but it's, it's the metaphor, it's the, um, the, the archetype of a bird that is just born fragile, small, too high of a metabolism that it's put into a position of like danger from predators every single night, but yet it wakes up the next day and it goes on drinking nectar and drinking nectar and drinking nectar and, and you know, continuing the pollination process. It puts itself at that risk. Okay, so when we get to the destiny level or in Gene Keys it's called the city level of this archetype, we're gonna see exquisiteness. And exquisiteness is when you are shining in the world from a pure divine essence. The divinity is shining from within you. Um, and you're gonna be able to recognize the diamond within other people. And so this you know, archetype could also make somebody a really great teacher, but it's not just limited to teaching, but it's that person who's kind of like, I see you, I see your gifts, I see what they are. I'm gonna empower you into that. Um, you know that when you have this archetype, this is super interesting, you know that individuality is not really real. It's a little bit of an illusion because when you do that, you know, uh, sculpting the diamond process, you know, when you're trying to figure out who you are, this process can be limitless. You can go inwards and inwards and keep trying to carve yourself and carve yourself that you may actually be able to transcend your natal chart in astrology. You may transcend your human design body graphs. You may transcend your genetic um, 
alignments in the gene keys, you can transcend all of that. And because, you know, these, you know, human design, the gene keys, and astrology, they are systems. They are a certain metaphysical system as well, right? And this archetype is all about transcending the system. So you can even transcend that. But um, it's not something that, you know, you have to devote yourself to doing. It's like, it's a natural process, right? And so when you do this, you begin to be in alignment with your consciousness. You can almost like step out of yourself and see yourself from an outsider's perspective and see what's happening in your life. And I want to use this um, analogy. When this happens, it's kind of like a stream of water. And, you know, water is the consciousness of the collective, it's the society, but you're, you're standing outside of that. And let's say that the water is running downstream, you're standing at the top of the stream. You dip your finger into that water, what happens is that the water is going to change its course. When the water changes its course, it's going to go in a particular direction, but you don't know which direction it's going to go in. You can't choose that. But whatever is happening with you know, your hand, yourself, and your aura, you, whatever you're dipping in there, your feet, that's you. And so when you have this archetype, you're an example for other people, but you cannot control how other people are going to perceive or receive your influence. If you've done the work, they will be impacted by you, but it's not for you to control how that's going to happen. You're here to just appear, step into that water, upstream, just appear there and see what kind of influence you will have on the collective. And, you know, the moment that you step out of the river, um, the stream or the river, that, you know, the way that the water has flowed, it may have made a mark in the, or it may have created a new channel, shall we say, in the stream or created some kind of mark in the, in the rocks and the stones. So even when you're gone, even when you're not here anymore, you can still leave a mark on the world with this archetype because you've done something different. And so therefore, you, you're going to understand that, you know, consciousness is, um, is also unpredictable and it is forever changing. The stream's going to keep flowing and you can dip in here and there and impact the con consciousness of the collective but no matter what happens it will keep flowing and if you could impact somebody you know if you, in the next generations to come and step when you're not there anymore step into that stream you know you understand that this is what you're here to do you're not here to like take that water that consciousness and try to put it in a cup try to control it and try to you know, dip your hand in there and impact it from that way. That's not your mission here. That's not your um, influence, right? You're not here to be a leader where people are going to follow you in that sense. You're here to be an example and have fun with how people are going to follow you or not follow you or whatever they decide to do with your, um, your contributions. And if you have this archetype, you're also not going to limit yourself when you're working at the higher vibration to any one form of expression. You could be all in one, an artist, a teacher, a scientist, um, a, a doctor, a healer. You're not limiting yourself to any one particular form of expression. And that is pure exquisiteness. So Richard Rudd associates this archetype with um, the eternal love knot and, you know, that um, the infinity symbol there and different beliefs will have a different version of the infinity knot, but the idea remains the same. Love never ends and love is about freedom. Um, in a lot of my videos on this channel, I talk about how love is freedom. Love is letting somebody fly like, fly like a free bird, not fry. Yeah, it's letting somebody fly like a free bird and experience things for themselves. That is real love. And therefore, this archetype has an ability to provide contributions that's coming from true love. First, you're devoted to com and committed to figuring out yourself, knowing who you are, giving you that sense of self-love. And then you are devoted to 
freeing other people from the system to impacting, influencing them to become free thinkers, living with freestyle. And therefore, this is unconditional, limitless love that you are here to give to the world. Yes. So that's going to be my interpretation of this archetype. If you have it, do comment below and let us know what your experiences have been. If you like this video, do give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below if you haven't. If you already subscribed, then thank you very much for coming along. Um, my website is now back and I have several services offered there for you guys, including a combo reading of astrology, human design, and the gene keys. So do check it out. And um, yeah, I'll see you soon, beautiful souls. Bye.